So in this part of the course, we're going to explore some of the psychological effects that humans deal with in space. And so we're sitting outside in the beautiful uh, psychology court here at ANU with Professor Kate Reynolds. Kate, well, firstly, what do you work on, actually? So when it comes to issues to do with space, we're very interested in better understanding this question of team cohesion. So yep. when you've got a group of people who are in an abnormal environment for long periods of time, there are all sorts of things that can go right and wrong with respect to how they interact, how they resolve conflict, uh, and how would we know that things are going well or badly? And as we endeavour to send more people into space and for longer periods of time, those kind of questions really come to the fore. And so kind of, so this broadly idea then of, of space psychology, I guess, is figuring out how humans not just physically survive in space, but as we say, thrive, right? Actually make it through it because that is the key. And, and if we've talked about in other parts of this course, space is very different from here on Earth and this affects how humans behave as well, yes? Yeah, so what we know is that being in space can have all sorts of physiological and cognitive impacts on the individual. Um, you know, for, for an example, cognition slows down, hand-eye coordination is much slower. Mm. There's all sorts of direct functional elements associated with uh, being in space. And of course, you know, we can train people to prepare for that. Uh, we can compensate for that. There can be a range of exercises and things that, that people do. Uh, and we can monitor those things quite straightforwardly. So there's lots of work to do there. But equally, we've got a team often in space. Yep. So all of the challenges that we know happen when we work together in a high stakes, high pressured environment are coming to the fore in a very tiny, confined space, um, you know, floating through space. So, <laughs> so we really need to understand how do we function well together? Uh, how do these teams function well together? Uh, how do we know they're going well or badly? How might we put, monitor it? How might we put countermeasures in place? Because ultimately there is a view that the mission success or failure will ultimately come down to those issues of team cooperation, how to resolve conflict and cohesion. So yeah. will we do what we're wanting to do in space? Uh, how people function together is a really important part of that equation. And, and that's kind of what you're interested in, right? Is, is, is that, uh, that team interaction style? And I guess it's also applicable to other environments here on Earth as well, right? Yeah, I mean, if we could work out the secret ingredients, well, they won't be so secret, but if we could <laughs> understand them very well, that it's going to drive high team performance under pressure, uh, and we know how to put countermeasures into place. How do we train people, give people real-time intervention, even though we, we might be a long way away? Uh, you can imagine how organisations, all organisations really, or any student group or any context where we're working together on problems mm. will benefit from such knowledge. So this is kind of the, the next few sections of this course that we're going to explore some of these concepts, some of the things that have worked, some of the things that haven't worked, uh, and I guess what is the work going on now, and that's what we'll do over the next few lectures. So there's a lot of issues that these astronauts face being in space. What are some of them? I mean, are, are they ones that relate here to Earth, or are they completely different? Well, I think they're ones we're familiar with. So when astronauts have come back and work's been done to try and understand the experience or what the challenges were, a big one is sleeplessness. And we all know that we don't go so well without sleep. Yeah. Uh, and that is, a, that is a really big issue um, in the context of, of astronauts going into space. The other one is they're in very confined spaces. So, yeah. you know, there is a sense in which that could be a bit claustrophobic or you've got to get used to being in a confined space. One that you all might be very familiar with is fear of missing out, right? So there, um, <laughs> so, so you know, FOMO yeah, in space exactly. is there a real is thing. FOMO right, in space, okay. right? So, you know, they're dislocated from what's going on on Earth, often from family, from relationships, and so there is that sense that uh, that they're missing out on things, okay. uh, and of course that could bring low mood uh, and and sort of um, be difficult for people to cope with. Uh, there's the cognitive and um, psychological functioning, which okay. um, people can be prepared for, but we know happens with everything kind of slowing 
slowing down a bit. So and, and yeah. is it slowing down because of the physical environment? Is it because of the sleep conditions? Is it a mixture? I think there is, it affects the brain. So okay. it, it is actually affecting the way the cognitive system is working, okay. but as well as being exacerbated okay. by these elements in the environment. So, so you, you quite literally have physical and chemical reactions that are just working yes. differently yeah, yeah. in addition to then these yes. other external factors. You know, for example, the hand-eye coordination Coordin yeah, yeah. Is, is an example of that. So, 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 so astronauts genuinely have worse hand-eye coordination yeah. in space. Yeah, yeah. So there are okay. all these kind of challenges. And of course, lots of them are known. And so it is possible to select train and put things in place in space you often might have seen images of people exercising trying mm. to keep up sort of uh, bone mass and things so these are all measures because we know there's an impact of being in space the area where i think more recently there's been uh, much more attention because if people are traveling to space for longer mm -hmm. then some of these issues around you know, who's going, what are the characteristics they're going to make for a good astronaut, uh, how are they going to work effectively together, often the missions are more complicated, yep. uh, how do those elements work? So there is this sense that there is a risk to future missions that is driven by co communication, coordination mm. uh, and team elements. And so there is a sort of newfound interest or a renewed interest uh, in trying to deal with some of those issues. Yeah, so it's kind of like, I think people have heard sometimes, you know, having the right stuff, but the right stuff is clearly hard to define and changing now based on the mission parameters, is that it? So there's a there's much greater emphasis on team orientation, yeah. on ability to solve problems and not just, you know, conceptual problems out there, but problems within the team itself. Yeah. Uh, and more interested in what is the personality profile or what are the characteristics are uh, they going to make for a successful mission? And there we can see an emphasis on some of these. The people side of the equation uh, is coming in much more strongly. And, and so is there a way then of selecting this out in the astronaut profile? Like, do you just have a question of, can you work in teams? Like, yeah, I mean, that so, feels yeah, yeah. kind of arbitrary. Like, so how do you screen for that? Yeah, so psychology uh, prides itself, I would say, on uh, all sorts of ways in, it, in which it might measure people's sort of know-how, capability, yep. characteristics. Uh, and it would be doing personality tests, it would be doing cognitive ability tests, uh, it would be measuring for team orientation. Yep. There are scales that assess those qualities. It would be putting teams together in high risk pressured environments and studying okay. uh, how, how uh, the groups are performing. And there are a number of sites around the world and um, we're really hopeful there'll be one in Australia as well where they try and simulate what it'll be like in a Mars type environment and very closely assess people in those environments to see what's driving success. So essentially it's kind of creating an artificial space environment and purely testing not for physical gravity pressure changes but purely that team interactions psychology yeah. training yeah, yeah. and so screening there's, there's one in hawaii for example high seas which yep. was set up specifically to better understand some of these elements of team cohesion and cooperation uh, there's others of course in, there's a number of sites nasa has one there's uh, a couple in antarctica because yep. that's an they're trying to simulate an isolated, confined, extreme environment. Yep. Uh, there's one um, in the Utah desert where we've had some researchers go and do some work. We've also had researchers go to Antarctica to the European Space Agency site. So there are ways in which we can study these things, but nothing is the same really on Earth as what it's going to be like in space. Great.